The progression of normal tissues into cancer is an evolutionary process whereby natural selection acts on mutations arising in cells. If a mutation is beneficial, positive selection increases its prevalence in the population. Alternatively, if a mutation is deleterious, negative selection removes it. However, selection for advantageous mutations and against deleterious mutations becomes inefficient when natural selection must act on multiple mutations at once. This occurs through three separate interference processes. The first process is known as clonal interference. If two adaptive mutations arise within the population at the same time, their descendants will first increase in prevalence but then eventually compete with one another. Neither lineage takes over the population, thereby reducing the efficiency of positive selection. Most new mutations, however, are deleterious to cells. When too many deleterious mutations arise within a population at once, they interfere with negative selection through a second process known as Mueller's ratchet. If the fittest genome in the population is lost, the maximum fitness of the population irreversibly declines, akin to a ratchet that only turns in one direction. Finally, if an adaptive and deleterious mutation arise within the same individual, positive selection for the adaptive mutation interferes with negative selection against the deleterious mutation. If positive selection prevails, then the deleterious mutation will also increase in the population through genetic hitchhiking. This process reduces the efficiency of both positive and negative selection. All three of these processes that impede the efficiency of selection are collectively referred to as Hill-Robertson interference. In the 1950s, Hill and Robertson noted that recombination, which reshuffles combinations of mutations, alleviates this interference between selective forces acting on multiple mutations. Cancers are a very unique organism because tumor cells do not recombine. In this study, we wanted to understand the extent of Hill-Robertson interference in cancer. We hypothesized that interference would be pervasive in tumors carrying many mutations, and thus, the efficiency of natural selection should decline as the number of mutations in a tumor increases. To measure the efficiency of selection, we utilize the statistic called DNDS. DNDS is the ratio of non-synonymous mutations, or mutations that change protein coding sequences, to synonymous mutations, which do not change proteins, and provide a baseline rate for mutation accumulation. When protein coding mutations experience negative selection, they are purged from the population and this ratio is less than 1. Conversely, when protein coding mutations are selected for, this ratio exceeds 1. Finally, if there is no selection, this ratio is approximately 1. We applied DNDS to tens of thousands of human tumor genomes. In tumors with very few mutations, we observed strong signals of positive selection in genes known to cause cancer, called driver genes. However, in tumors with many mutations arising at the same time, the efficiency of positive selection declines. Conversely, in genes not associated with cancer, most mutations are eliminated by natural selection when they arise individually. However, once again, when multiple mutations arise simultaneously within tumors, negative selection rapidly becomes inefficient. Using a simple evolutionary model of cancer, we found that both trends can be explained by Hill-Robertson interference alone and that we should expect a substantial load of deleterious mutations in most tumors. We tested this prediction by investigating pathways which remove and repair proteins damaged by these mutations. We discovered that as a tumor's mutational load increases, these pathways become increasingly active. This confirms that many accumulating mutations are, in fact, deleterious to cancer cells and yet evade natural selection through Hill-Robertson interference in most cancers. Because we can target these pathways with existing drugs, we believe that this mutational load constitutes an untapped therapeutic target. To learn more about this work and how we are using evolutionary simulations to decipher cancer genomes, check out the links below.